Good afternoon, my dear students and friends. Myself, Dr. Ravi Khan Patel, and I'm going to start your video lecture class. In the last video lecture, we have studied about the breathing and exchange of gases. This chapter I have started. Right now, today, in the sequence of this chapter, we will discuss the new topic, and the name of topic is the human respiratory system. So what is the human respiratory system? We can see here, first of all, human respiratory system includes, there is the two things, first is the respiratory pathway and another is the respiratory organ, so you can say lungs, okay? So respiratory pathway, they included the nostril and nozzle chamber and pharynx, then larynx, then trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, alveoli, and this is the formula how you will learn, okay? So N N P T L B uh, sorry N P N N P L T B B A that means N P L T N P L T B B A N stands for nostrils and nozzle chamber and P stands for pharynx L stands for larynx T stands for trachea B stands for bron uh, bronchi and another B stands for bronchioles and A stands for alveoli. So this is the short trick and uh, by which you can learn very easily and another is the respiratory organ so this respiratory organ included the lungs okay so this is the uh, human respiratory system so they include these things in the figure you can see first of all they are representing the oral cavity that means vestibule then here uh, nasal cavity by which air pass and after that they have the pharynx pharynx and then uh, epiglottis pharynx you know pharynx is the uh, you can say connecting link which where where the uh, air, air means food junction as well as respiratory junction means food junction and respiratory junction both connecting to each other okay this is the junction where the both passes separate means air passes as well as food passes now they have given the epiglottis epiglottis this is the thin flap cartilage structure which is present on the glottis and this is the larynx larynx also known as the voice box they are provided with the vocal cord also phagus also known as the food pipe this length is the 30 cent uh, centimeter then trachea trachea also known as the wine pipe or wind pipe so here after that there is the lung so this is the left lung upper lobe and here right lung and upper lobe also this is the middle lobe of the lung and this is the lower lobe and here lower lobe and this is the pulmonary artery and this is the structure of the heart okay so this figure representing the human respiratory system so here what is representing it is representing the human respiratory system now next this is the path this is the path by which air enters and this is explaining very detailed and very easy if you are try to understand so that means very good and clear concept here you can see first of all what is the respiratory tract what we have to see Path, path or respiratory tracts, both are the same. Respiratory passage or respiratory tracts, both are the same. So here you can say, a passage from external nostril to lung. External nostril to lung, this is called the respiratory tract. Here they have the external layer, means that is the outer, outer opening of the nose. Then vestibule, then nasal chamber, then nasopharynx, then pharynx, then larynx, then trachea. So this is the trachea after bronchial tree, respiratory tree, and alveoli of lungs, okay? So these have given here, that means firstly, air enters into the external layer, then pass through the vestibule, then nasal chamber, then nasopharynx, then pharynx, then larynx, then trachea, then bronchi, then respiratory tree, and alveoli of lungs, okay? So this is the path by which airs enter inside into the lungs, okay? In the figure here you can see, in the figure representing there is the two things. First is the nasopharynx. So here there is the nasopharynx means by which air enters. And this is the oropharynx. Oropharynx means by which food enters. And this is the gullet. This is the gullet structure. After then they have the glottis. And this glottis covered by the thin flap cartilage structure which is known as the epiglottis. And then this is the oesophagus and this is the trachea. So this is the structure of the trachea. Okay. So now this showing the passes by which air enter inside the body. Okay. Now first, firstly we will see the about nose. Okay. Nose. 
that is it is also known as the nostril nose also known as the nostril so no nose included nose included the two two thing first is the nostril and another is the nasal chamber so here two things nostril and nasal chamber nostrils are the external opening of the nose this is the external opening of the nose and these are also called the external nares we have already seen in the previous pathes similarly a pair of internal opening is present and they open into pharynx and these are called the internal nares means nostrils have the two things two things first is the outer opening outer opening that is the external nares and internal they have internal opening which is present also it is known as the internal nares now nasal chamber the space between the external and internal nares the space between external and internal nares that is called the nasal chamber and internally each one is lined by a mucous membrane which secretes the mucus and they also provided with the ciliated epithelium present in the nasal chamber okay and this nasal chamber it is divided into right and left parts by the cartilage cartilage known as the mesenchymal bone okay this is the mesenchymal bone we have to already study and this is the in the center of the ethmoid part of the skull so this is the uh, located near to the this is the mesenchymal bone and it is located in the center of the ethmoid and ethmoid is the uh, bone of the skull okay so there is the two things first is the nostril another is the nasal chamber nostril have the uh, opening outside which is known as the external opening and uh, inside there is the internal opening and in between in between they have the space which is known as the nasal chamber okay now here you can see figure so this is the representing the detail this is the vestibule vestibule and this is the ent ent anterior nares okay anterior nares and here this is the hard palate soft palate different different region pharyngeal tons of uh, here coena and cella tarsica sphenoid sinus and ethmoid bone so different in this representing the different bone of the skull okay so this represent the is uh, different bone of the skull now here you can see next is the each nasal chamber you can see what is representing each nasal chamber is further divided into three region first is called the vestibule second is the respiratory part and third is the sensory part okay so here this vestibule this is the anterior most part of the nasal chamber and it has the hair to trap the dust particles and prevent them from going inside that means they are provided with the hair hair that is the cilia like structure this is called the hair and these hair have ability to trap the dust particle which is which cannot enter inside the respiratory tract okay second is the respiratory part this is the part of the richly supplied with capillaries means there is the uh, blood vessel there is a highly much reached blood vessel and it warms the air and makes it moist it makes is the moist okay so this is the respiratory tract respiratory part so in the uh, in north indian side people they have one uh, one concept like that in the uh, in the uh, summer season if you eat the uh, uh, means unripened mango so then uh, people are saying blood will come from your nose so that is not a, a actual concept actual concept here so this is the respiratory part and they are provided with the blood capillaries and at that time there is the temperature very much so up to 40 to 45 degrees centigrade and in this temperature so there is one wind also blowing which is known as the loo so this loo when means this wind when uh, strike on the this blood capillaries it will, uh, comes outside so this strike on the blood, blood capillaries so blood capillaries get got ruptured this blood capillaries got ruptured and started to secrete the blood started to secrete the blood this is the actual thing so what uh, uh, people are saying like that if you eat the unripened mango during the summer season so that will cause the uh, bleeding from the nose so that is not actual fact okay so next thing sensory part the third is the uh, sensory part and this is the lined by the sensory epithelium for detection of the smell so they are provided with the sensory epithelium which involves in the uh, detection of the smell that is you can say simply olfactory organ okay this is provided with the olfactory 
organ and same figure which have, which have already seen previously that is also representing now next is the pharynx pharynx we know very well pharynx i had already told it is the junction it is the junction between two pass wood pass and the respiratory passes okay so pharynx nasal chamber open into the pharynx and it is a short vertical tube measuring about the 12 cm you will see so 12 cm means trachea and pharynx both length are the same little bit differences but in case of the oesophagus oesophagus is the very large their length is the 30 cm oesophagus length is the 30 cm and here trachea and pharynx approx you can say both are the same length the respiratory and the food passes so cross each other in the pharynx by two separates the passes i had already told so pharynx is the junction where food and uh, food and respiratory passes both with each other so here they have they have divided it means each other in the the respiratory and food pass cross each other in the pharynx by two separate passes now the upper part upper part of the pharynx is known as the nasopharynx which helps in the conduction of air and the lower part is called the laryngopharynx or oropharynx conducting of the food to oesophagus means they have the two things first is the naso and another is the laryngo or oro naso stands for nasopharynx stands for the means they have ability to carry the air and oropharynx they have ability to passes of the food in the pharynx the, uh, three, there are tonsils in the pharynx they have the tonsils and these tonsils made up of the lymphatic tissue and they kill the bacteria trapped in the mucus because this lymphatic tissue have the secretion of the mucus in which bacteria trap and these bacteria cannot enter into the food or air passes clear so means both passes okay so they prevent the entry of any bacteria inside the food or air passes and this pharynx provided with the lymphatic tissue okay so now you can see in this figure so what is representing so here first of all they have the this is the upper lip and this is the oral cavity here vestibule and this is the tongue tongue we will also discuss uh, we have already studied the tongue in case of the we have already studied tongue in case of the digestive digestion and absorption chapter okay and this is the nasal cavity here hard palate this is the soft palate and this is the pharyngeal tonsils eustachian tube which is the related to the ear and here this is the nasopharynx you can see nasopharynx means they are related to the air passes and here this is the oropharynx oropharynx which is related to food pass okay and here they have the palatine tonsil and this is the uvula and here lingual tonsil and epiglottis and here laryngopharynx so this is called the laryngopharynx which is the near so this is the oropharynx and this is the laryngopharynx clear oropharynx means near to the mouth okay and lar laryngopharynx which is located to near to the larynx that is called the uh, laryngopharynx okay next we uh, next what is they have larynx what is the larynx larynx also known as the sound box larynx also considered as a sound box it is the sound producing organ hence also called the sound box okay and in case of the males the larynx increases in size at the time of puberty we know very well at the time of puberty the size of larynx increases and they form a special structure which is known as the adam's apple and these can be noticed in the neck region okay means when the male pupils become adult became adult so that time this larynx became large in size and this is known as the adam's apple from the from the pharynx air enters to the larynx through an opening called glottis okay we know when the air pass from the pharynx it enters into the larynx and through the an opening through an opening which is known as the glottis this is the very very important next sentence the glottis is guarded by a cartilage flap like structure called epiglottis and it prevents the entry of food particles into the respiratory passes very very important so this epiglottis is the thin flap cartilage structure which prevent, which prevent the entry of food into the air passes they have already asked one question on the basis of this concept 
they have asked uh, so two to three people are going to uh, uh, into hotel they they went into the hotel and they have started to eat after that sometimes they have started to coughing they have started to cough means how this cough had happened means how this cough occurred so this cough occurred due to the irregular movement of the epiglottis this cough occurred due to the irregular movements of the epiglottis so this i have already asked in the neat and ems exam question okay so this is the basic function of the epiglottis epiglottis is a thin flap cartilage structure which have which have ability to prevent the entry of food into the air passes okay along the side of glottis are two folds of the elastic tissue called the vocal cord and this responsible for producing the sound so vocal cord is the structure where the producing of the sound this means this as it is the actual site which will be responsible for production of the sound now here we can see that is the structure first is the nasopharynx air passes oropharynx food passes and here they have the epiglottis this is the thin flap cartilage structure which is known as the epiglottis and laryngopharynx pharynx region which is found near to the larynx and then here vocal cord this is the vocal cord which is the sound producing organ and this is the larynx larynx also included the vocal cord trachea trachea wine pipe and this is the oesophagus this is the food pipe here you can say detailed structure of the lar laryngoscopic view in which showing the this is the tongue and here epiglottis then vocal cord trachea and also phagus so sometimes also phagus also known as the esophagus okay now next structure we will see the trachea 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 also known as the wind pipe and i had already told if we we'll check their length so their length trachea length as well as trachea length as well as uh, uh trachea length and one more also you can say uh pharynx so trachea and pharynx both have the same length okay so it is about 12 cm and uh, long and 2.5 cm wide it lies in the front of the oesophagus and extends downward into the neck region it means it generally uh, lies front in front of the oesophagus and moves uh, moves towards the neck region the wall of the trachea this is also very important what is the function which prevent from the collapse so here they went the wall of trachea is made up of the fibrous muscular tissue supported by c shaped cartilaginous ring this is the very very important c shaped cartilaginous ring and this is the 60 to 20 in number they make the trachea rigid means the basic function of the c shaped cartilage cartilage rings to prevent from the collapse to prevent from the collapse of the trachea it means it is provide the rigidity so this provide the rigidity now the trachea is internally lined with the ciliated epithelium and mucus gland so the basic function of the ciliated mucus ciliated epithelium they pass the air they pass the air and trap the uh, bacterial or uh, dust particles other thing if any foreign particle enters it immediately expelled expelled out by the coughing action so if any uh, foreign particles or any uh, any uh, unwanted undesired things enter inside the trachea so the trachea basic function to expel immediately expelled outside by the coughing action it means they have start to coughing by which uh, dust particles or any undesired air entering inside the body so it will expel dust particles get trapped by the mucus mucus also because we have to see there is the ciliated epithelium and mucus gland so ciliated epithelium basic function of the ciliated epithelium that is the uh, it have involves in the foreign particles immediately expelled by the coughing action so this is the function of the trachea okay so dust particle gets trapped by the mucus dust particle gets trapped by the mucus and by ciliary movement they are swept by towards the larynx and uh, uh, larynx and you can say one uh, one thing also they have given larynx and uh, wait one second i i cannot see properly so that means larynx and finally larynx and finally they enter the oesophagus larynx and finally enters into the oesophagus okay 
So these are the function of the ciliated epithelium. Ciliated epithelium function, that is the ciliary movement. They swept towards the larynx and finally the enters into the oesophagus. Okay. So these these are uh, these dust particles are anything anything get trapped by the mucus and with the ciliary movement they can uh, swept into the larynx larynx as well as and finally through the larynx it will reach into the oesophagus. So this is showing. Now here you can say the structure of the larynx first is the given about the thyroid cartilage. So this is the thyroid cartilage and here it is the larynx and uh, this is the trachea structure. This is the trachea structure, thyroid cartilage, required cartilage, annular segment and tracheal cartilage. So different different of the C shaped rings and uh, this trachea divided into different regions. Okay. Now here this is the carina and left uh, uh, primary bronchus and right primary bronchus and this is the detailed structure of inside the trachea so here they have been the cross section so they have the trachealis muscles oesophagus lumen of trachea trachea pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium you should to learn trachea they have provided with the pseudo stratified columnar epithelial cells and uh, this is the epithelial cells and stratified this is the pseudo stratified ciliated means they are provided with the cilia and we have to see the function of cilia. They uh, trap the dust particles and uh, swept out, swept towards the larynx and ultimately it into the oesophagus. And they are also provided with the C-shaped cartilaginous ring. The basic function of the C-shaped cartilage rings to prevent the collapse, to prevent the collapse from the uh, trachea. Okay. Next is the bronchi and bronchioles. You can see next what is showing the bronchi and bronchial so this bronchi the distal end of the trachea the distal end of trachea is further divided into two bronchi behind the sternum okay the sternum behind the sternum it generally found and it formed the two things two uh, two branch that means you can say uh, uh, bronchi this is also called the two bronchi each bronchus is supported by a complete ring of cartilage each bronchus is supported by a complete ring of the cartilage. Clear? So it means like you can say, you have to see in trachea, they also provided with the C-shaped cartilage ring. But here they have the cartilage rings, not C-shaped. Okay? Here complete ring of the cartilage. It enters into the lungs of its respective side. It enters into the lungs, means uh, respective side means left or right, there is the need. On entering the lungs, each bronchus further divided into the secondary and then tertiary bronchi. It means there is the rapid division. So after that, when trachea further divided, they form the secondary and tertiary bronchi. Tertiary bronchi further divided into many minute bronchioles. They form the many minute bronchial structure. And the wall of each bronchiole does not have the cartilage ring. So this is the very, very important. We have to see bronchi, bronchi trachea, C shaped cartilage rings, bronchi, they have the complete cartilage rings, and uh, bronchioles, no cartilage rings generally found. Each bronchioles end into a balloon like structure which is known as the alveolus, and alveolus considered as a unit of the lungs. The basic function of alveolus to increase the surface area by which gaseous exchange takes place. So, this is the unit of lungs considered as. The alveoli makes the lungs spongy and elastic in nature. Okay, so this is the bronchi and bronchioles. So this is the difference between bronchi and bronchioles. So here you can say this is the trachea. Now primary bronchi and secondary bronchi. So this is uh, sorry, this is the primary bronchi, bronchius, primary uh, bronchi, and this is the secondary bronchi, and this is the tertiary bronchi. Okay. Tertiary bronchi for the divided. Tertiary bronchi for the divided into the different different uh, named like you can see. First of all, there is the bronchioles. This is the primary bronchioles, then tertiary bronchioles, and ultimately form the alveoli. It will form ultimately alveoli, which is the bunch of the grafts. You will see bunch of the grafts like structure, and this is the actual site where the gaseous exchange takes place. Okay, so this is the story about the bronchi and bronchioles. Now this is the very very important part you can say these have divided into two different regions so first is the conducting zone 
first is the conducting zone conducting zone means from trachea from trachea to terminal of the bronchiole from trachea to terminal of the bronchioles this is considered as a conducting zone and from the respiratory to alveoli this is called the respiratory zone respiratory zone means here the gaseous exchange takes place but from trachea bronchi bronchioles uh, this is called the conducting zone they are branches you will see the branches trachea have only one and after trachea bronchi they form primary and secondary then further further dividation takes place four and then eight here form the eight and bronchioles bronchioles have the 16 branching and terminals of the bronchioles that means here 32 and ultimately form the 6 into 10 to power 4 terminal bronchioles and ultimately respiratory bronchioles there is also number branching increasing 5 into 10 to power 5 and last is the alveolar sacs their number 8 into the 10 to power 6 it means if we say bronchioles so there is the large number of the bronchioles structure so here into 5 into 10 to power 5 okay so uh, this have given about the different zone that means first you can say respiratory the sorry conducting zone and another is the respiratory zone clear so conducting zone and another is the respiratory zone now next is the lungs which is the very important and we have to see about the resp respiratory organ so amphibian uh, sorry mammals birds uh, mammals birds they have the lungs okay so uh, here mammals birds both have the respiratory organ you can say lungs okay now first of all you can see these lungs these are the very uh, principal respiratory organs and located in the thoracic cavity okay we know very well uh, thoracic cavity our body is divided into two different regions abdominal cavity and thoracic cavity which is the dividing by the diaphragm so diaphragm helps in the division of the body cavity into two regions thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity so lungs located near means into the thoracic cavity and lungs are the paired hollow elastic organ and each lung is enclosed in the pleural sac they are the one membrane which is known as the pleural sac clear so this is the membrane which is known as the pleural sac okay pleural sac is made up of the two membrane outer outer parietal and inner visceral so outer is the parietal and inner is the visceral the enclosed cavity is called the pleural cavity they have also one cavity which is also known as the pleural cavity okay and in the pleural cavity what they have here you will see they have the pleural fluid you can see the pleural cavity is filled with the pleural fluid which lubricates the pleura and prevents the friction when the pleural membrane slide over each other means when the, uh, because, uh, there is the lungs contracts and relax okay lungs contract and relax so this pleural fluid provides the means prevent from the friction that is they have given so they have the provide the lubrication first is the provides the lubrication pleura and prevents the friction when the uh, pleural membrane slide over each other when the pleural membrane slide over each other okay and now you can see here uh, lungs are pink in color soft elastic and distensible clear so you can say this is the color of the lungs and it is the pink in color soft and elastic and distensible distensible means they have the large extensive or expansion activity they are highly vascularized that means they are also supplied with the blood vessels okay now we will see the detailed structure of the lungs here so this is the trachea this is the trachea now there is the two uh, bron bron uh, bronchus first is the right main bronchus and this is the left main bronchus okay then here bronchioles and uh, we have to see like bronchus and trachea both of the cartilage ring but bronchiole have not cartilage ring then bronchi and here for the dividend you will see so uh, that is the left lobe this is the left lobe and this is the pleura membrane and here they are filled with the pleural fluid and this is the diaphragm which have ability to divide the body into two regions uh, uh, thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity and here alveoli this is the bunch of the grips like structure this is the actual site where the respiration that is gaseous exchange takes place okay and uh, you can say alveoli is considered as a unit of the lungs okay so alveoli considered as a unit of lung so each lung so if you see the each lung have how many alveoli so each sac about it's saying the each sac about 
20 alveoli which look like grapes okay and they are covered with a network of the capillaries from the pulmonary artery and vein okay we have to know uh, we we know very well so pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein so this is the exception every artery always carry the pure blood except the pulmonary artery and pulmonary veins so these pulmonary artery and pulmonary veins they covered this alveoli okay and the alveoli have very thin diameter so you should to learn uh, they have already asked in the neat examination the diameter of the alveoli so 0.001 millimeter is the diameter of alveoli okay and this have composed of the simple non ciliated squamous epithelium cells okay they have also this alveoli also made up of the squamous epithelial cells clear this is the squamous epithelial cells non ciliated and simple simple means only one type no cilia only one type of the cells that means simple squamous epithelial cells and it has collagen and elastin fiber we have to see like connective tissue we already have studied in which collagen and elastin fibers both generally form and these makes the alveoli very flexible because elastin fiber they provide the flex, uh, flexibility and collagen also both are the protein both are the protein that means uh, uh, you can say ecm extracellular matrix or simply you can say this is found intracellular within uh, sorry in between two cells this collagen are present okay and collagen you know one very interesting feature about the collagen it is the abundant protein in human body so this is the abundant protein in the human body okay each alveolus is about 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.1 millimeter in diameter okay so here they have given each alveolus is about 0 0.1 millimeter in diameter and alveoli thin means thick, very thin if you there if you see their wall so wall so wall thick wall thickness that is the 0 0.010001 millimeter this is the thickness and here their diameter diameter is the 0 0.1 millimeter okay the human lungs has about 750 million alveoli so large number of the million, million uh, so large number of the alveoli found so here 715 million alveoli which increase the surface area for exchange of gases because i had already told these things and the total are covered by them is about the 50 times the surface area of the skin okay we know very well skin is the largest organ in our body and these alveoli so it means can you can say these alveoli they covered 50 times 50 times our skin okay that means they have the much uh, expansion ability and alveoli are supplied by a network of the pulmonary capillaries where the blood passed okay so these are supplied with the blood okay here they have in the uh, same same figure same thing also here representing so we have already studied okay so this generally represents now thank you uh, thank you again